in that fun time in the 90s during what's commonly called the Chromium Age, we had a lot of things that shook up the comic book industry, and likewise, because of the connection, also shook up the toy industry. And yes, I'm showing a lot of uh, X-Force Deadpool product here because that was kind of the uh, heart of the matter, was how popular the characters were becoming, as well as the artists behind them. And this is what has directly led to the inability to get certain characters made as toys, even today. People have asked me many times, you know, why we can't get a cardiac figure. And I've done a video on this, but let me spell out kind of bigger background. All right, so it's a commonly known unknown fact that Rob Liefeld does get royalties for Deadpool and X-Force. It's something that bounced around for quite a few years and was a source of, uh, well, an issue between Rob and Marvel for quite a while. And by the time Deadpool got a movie, it was all worked out and it was decided that yes, Rob would get royalties from every Deadpool action figure made. Now, why was this loophole available for Rob Liefeld? I mean, there's tons of creators out there who have made tons of Marvel characters. Well, if you flip open a X-Force issue from Rob's run, you may see something curious in the bottom right-hand corner, and what I'm talking about is direct credit for creating the book, or the team, the characters, however you want to interpret that. This is very unusual. It's highly unusual for Marvel, DC, outside of, you know, Bill Finger issues. DC doesn't really recognize creators, same with Marvel. So why are we recognizing Rob Liefeld as the creator of X-Force? Well, a big part of it was the issues that were selling, and it was because of Rob's art. And Marvel understood that times were changing and that we were entering a time where the artists were truly selling the books over the characters. And this kind of boiled up to a concern when the toys that were also coming out, which were often inspired directly by this kind of current batch of superstar artists at Marvel, and they, they being Marvel, was getting pushback that from their artists saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, you made a toy based on my design, my character. I haven't seen a dime from that, and that's not really cool. So already, you know, it's kind of like the mutiny on the bounty. They could already see the writing on the wall before they, you know, left Tahiti. All right, I'm making obscure nautical novel references. The point is, Marvel kind of saw what was going on, and, I mean, this writing on the wall literally became uh, all of these artists breaking off and became, you know, image comics. Yeah, get it? The writing on the wall? Oh, it's a bad joke with a Savage Dragon pinup. All right, point being is this did happen. Their fears were justified because their A-list talent was unhappy and in order, this was pre-Image, to throw them a bone, if you will, and kind of prevent what would happen with Image happening, was Marvel decided to start issuing royalty checks for a very small number of artists and for a very small number of specific situations. This wasn't a blanket policy that went over everything. So as an example, with Rob Liefeld owning X-Force, well, he owned X-Force as a team. He would get royalties. And one of the loopholes was Cable appearing in the X-Men animated series. Cable alone does not an X-Force make. So while you would see X-Forcean characters in the backgrounds, or I mean, heck, Warpath even shows up in the opening credits due to an error, but that's not important right now, you would see full teams like the X-Men or even X-Factor showing up, but because X-Force, as a group, all together, was created by Rob Liefeld, royalties would need to be paid, and hence, if X-Force appeared in the animated series, they could only be in background characters or group shots. You never actually saw the team formed, if you will. All right, over on one of the other big books from the X-Books was, of course, Spider-Man, and the artists coming off Spider-Man, Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson, also who went on to form Image, were also given some what of the same uh, options, specifically Eric Larson on Cardiac, a character that he created, which he later said he, not that he regretted creating Cardiac, but he regretted giving this, this uh, dynamic design away because uh, he really liked this design and he was like, oh, I miss that. I wish I could still draw Cardiac or, you know, put him in one of my books. So even though Cardiac has been drawn by other artists, 
Eric was recognized as the creator, at least visually, and received a royalty on any cardiac merchandise. And if you look around and see all that cardiac merchandise in your collection, you understand why. So this isn't, again, an umbrella policy that went to every Marvel comic book writer and artist at the time. This was more of Marvel saying, oh, we're getting you know complaints from our superstar talent that they're not being treated right. We don't want them to leave us and form a new company. So maybe we should start paying them royalties. Now, it wasn't, it didn't go, you know, grandfathered in or backwards too. So the counterexample, Venom, who was co-created by Todd McFarlane, this was years before this, this policy was created. So Todd McFarlane does not get a royalty on Venom, even if they, you know, use Todd McFarlane art or base the sculpt off of his art. This predated this kind of stopgap measure that was initiated to prevent, ideally, their top talent from leaving. But yeah, nope, that didn't actually work because the top talent all did leave. And as a, you know, unless you've been under a rack for the last 30 years, you know that they formed Image Comics. And uh, when Marvel started seeing ads like this popping up in the comic book journal, they knew that even their limited royalties and ownership recognition wasn't enough. They thought it was, they hoped it would be, but the long-term consequences of that and the long-term consequence of, you know, what became known as the Image Boys or, you know, the Image Founders, getting these limited royalties and limited ownership means that royalties today still need to get paid. So why is Hasbro Marvel willing to do this for Deadpool, but not for Cardiac? Well, you have noticed that, you know, Deadpool is not only trifly popular, but he's a, you know, blockbuster movie star and is actually a top five character for all of Marvel as far as recognition. So yes, if they have to pay a little bit of royalty to for a top character that's going to sell units in the millions, awesome. Cardiac, on the other hand, uh, you know, C-list 90s villain, yes, he would look cool, yes, he's minimal tool, but a royalty has to get paid because he fell during that brief period where Marvel was giving royalties and limited recognition of creation. So Cardiac is basically more expensive to produce than other Spider-Man villains, and a marketing director is going to ask the brand manager who proposes Cardiac, well, is there someone we could do that doesn't have a royalty attached? And... They'll say, well, we could do the Rose. He's a head and an accessory. Oh, yeah, okay, do him. That's how it happens. That, that's how characters get made because they're less expensive, whether it's tooling or royalty-wise, to produce. I hope this video was insightful on why certain characters in that limited pre-Image Comics window from Marvel are sometimes more difficult to make as toys. Cardiac's an example. Deadpool's an example. There's many others. Have you had experience with this? Are there characters that uh, you wish you could get on your shelf that kind of fall into this odd loophole? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.